In this video, we are going to cover glycolysis. Glycolysis is the metabolization of glucose or glycogen or any other carbohydrate into pyruvate. Now this diagram covers glucose changing into all of these different forms all the way down to the final product of pyruvate. It also shows fructose being metabolized into the system, galactose into the system, and glycogen as well. There are many more types of carbohydrates, but glucose and glycogen are our focus for this video. Glucose is the simplest form of carbohydrate found in the diet and is going to be our main example as we move through these processes. Glycogen is a stored form of carbohydrate in the muscle and in the liver. Galactose and fructose are carbohydrates also found in the diet. Now we're going to cover through the processes step by step it looks a bit daunting now, but let's just take it one step at a time. So here we will break it down into very simple terms, just the starting sugars and the pyruvate. And if you notice, there are two pyruvate products for any one of these sugar molecules. We first have to understand that most sugars get turned into glucose 6-phosphate, which just means there's a phosphate added to the glucose on the number 6 carbon. Now glucose gets turned into that in one step. However, with glycogen, it needs two steps. First, glycogen needs to be converted to glucose 1-phosphate, which just means the phosphate is on carbon number 1, and then change into glucose 6-phosphate. Glucose requires energy for this to happen, but glycogen does not. The energy needs one ATP to transfer the phosphate onto the glucose, making it glucose 6-phosphate. Whereas glycogen already has the phosphate, this is because all glycogen molecules within the body originally came from being a glucose molecule from the diet and was stored because it wasn't used. So it will always have that phosphate and therefore not need that first conversion that the glucose does. Anyway, once these molecules have become glucose 6-phosphate, they turn into fructose 6-phosphate, which just means the glucose changes its shape. But the important part is, as we follow through the next step after that, fructose 6-phosphate gets another phosphate, which also takes one more molecule of ATP. Therefore, if we look at this, the glucose needs two ATP to be ready to be metabolized, whereas glycogen only needs one. Once both phosphates are added, the molecule becomes fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The bisphosphate just means that there's two phosphates, and the 1 and the 6 just means the carbons that they are attached to. We're going to skip a few steps and move on down to finish all the ATP production and spending. And here's where the first ATP molecules are actually made. Don't worry about the specific names of these substrates, but do note where this reaction occurs in this diagram. The second step that makes more ATP is when pyruvate is finally made. So the total ATP production is 4. However, we have to account for gross and net values. The gross value is 4, however, the net value is actually 2 ATP when using a glucose molecule and 3 ATP when using glycogen because if we recall, glycogen doesn't need the first ATP to be converted. The next step to look at is the middle step that we skipped. When fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is converted to the next step, it actually splits into two parts with one phosphate going on each part. The two separate molecules are glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Now in order for the steps to keep going, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate must be turned into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And that's just a simple step that we'll cover when we do enzymes for this process in another video. So we actually have two products of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate once we're ready to move forward. And this brings us to the last important energy producing step that we want to cover for glycolysis. This is the step from the 2-glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate to the 2-1,3-bisphosphoglycerate because this step actually creates two NADH molecules and H plus molecules. These will be used later on in the electron transport chain. One step that we really don't see as important right now because there is no ATP production from it is the two phosphoglycerate molecules that are sort of transitioning through but because it's not creating energy for us, we're not going to cover it in this video. Also, the steps from galactose to glucose 1-phosphate, from fructose to fructose 6-phosphate, and the molecules pentose, phosphate, and glycerol 
are all peripheral molecules that we're not worrying about for the next quiz. What you will need to know for this class is be sure to note that the total ATP production and the difference between glucose and glycogen in terms of how many net ATP are created from each. Also, you will need to know the layout of this diagram and be able to point out certain reactions that create the ATP and NADH molecules. For example, in which reaction are the second two ATP created? And this would be the answer. So that's everything you need to know for glycolysis in terms of energy production. We will cover important enzymes and important vitamins that act as coenzymes in later videos.